sin dihydroxylation is when we add two OH groups to the two carbons of an alkene, and they are added sin to each other, sin meaning on the same side of the double bond. So the two OH groups that we put on the carbons of the alkene are going to be going on the same side of the, of the double bond. The most commonly used reagent for syn dihydroxylation is cold potassium permanganate, KMnO4, in a basic solution, hydroxide. It needs to be kept cold because potassium permanganate will do other reactions if it, as, if it is at room temperature or warmer. So um, if you see just KMnO4 without the cold part, this is not what it's going to do. It's got to be cold for this reaction to work. There are some other reagents that you can use to do the syn dihydroxylation reaction. They all use osmium tetraoxide, OSO4, which is a very expensive reagent. It's also pretty toxic, so it's not used as commonly, but you might end up seeing it in your textbook or in, in problems. The osmium tetraoxide is always with something else. Sometimes it's a step one, step two. Sometimes it's just osmium tetraoxide with other reagents. And it's actually a lot of different things that it can be combined with. NaHSO3 and water. Or it could be combined with Na2SO3 and water. Those are both very similar. Or it can be combined with a solvent called NMO, uh, which is N-methyl morpholine oxide. Or it can be combined with this um, tert butyl peroxide. So uh, my advice is to just sort of um, remember if you see osmium tetraoxide, it really doesn't matter what it's with. This is, this is the only reaction that osmium tetraoxide is used for. So in terms of, of recognizing the reagent, this is really the only one that's important to recognize. And then as far as problems where you have to provide the reagent for the reaction, I recommend just remembering this one, memorizing this one. We're not going to look at the mechanism for this reaction. We're going to jump straight to examples after we look at the conditions of this reaction. It is, as I mentioned, it is a syn addition. The two OH groups going on the same side of the double bond. And because there's no carbocation in this reaction, there is no rearrangement of the carbon skeleton in this reaction. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. This is really similar to the anti-dihydroxylation reaction, just in terms of how we're going to approach problem solving. So knowing that we don't make any changes to the carbon skeleton, we're going to draw that carbon skeleton with no changes made to it. And then we're going to focus on the two carbons that we're working on. And we're just going to put those two OH groups going on the same side of the molecule and we're going to recognize that maybe they go on that side but also maybe they would go on this side as well so we have two possible products that we're looking at now we're probably going to have to deal with stereochemistry um, but before we make that decision we should look at the two carbons that we that we worked on in this reaction and ask ourselves if they're chiral uh, I've been using this same molecule over and over again. So if you've been watching a series of these videos, you already know that both of these carbons are chiral. And when both of the carbons are chiral, then we have to address the whole wedge and the dash situation on them. So the easiest way to do this without making a mistake is to go back to the original alkene, pick two substituents that are on the same side of the double bond, Decide to make them both wedges, or you could make them both dashes, and then maintain that stereochemistry through the reaction into both of the products. So we're maintaining that stereochemistry. Go back to the alkene again, pick two things that are on the same side, make them both dashes, and maintain that stereochemistry in your products as well. And here, when you have to draw in the hydrogen, 
Make sure that you're drawing the hydrogen side by side with the wedge. Remember the wedge and the dash go side by side and the two straight bonds go side by side. So these are the two products that are formed in this reaction. Here's another reaction. We'll take a look at this one. First, let's draw our carbon skeleton, no rearrangements. And we'll put those two OH groups sin to each other. So they're both pointing in the same direction. Two OH groups sin to each other both pointing in the same direction. Do we have to deal with stereochemistry? Are these carbons chiral? This carbon is not chiral because it has two hydrogens on it, so this is our only chiral carbon. And in previous videos, I've been telling you the easiest way when you only have one chiral carbon, when you're only making one chiral carbon, the easiest way is to just draw that carbon chiral with both possible options for stereochemistry. That's the simplest way to do it. And so those are the products of this reaction.